My name is Jeroen Kloosterman and I'm a product strategy manager for Oracle. Machine learning algorithms fall into roughly three categories and I think it's important that you have a grasp of this. First of all, there's supervised learning. What makes this unique is that here we have labeled historical data. Labeled means that our example data also holds the value of the thing that we try to predict. So for example, uh, ask yourself now, in the example for predicting house prices, is that a supervised learning problem? And yes, of course it is, because we have the house prices of that historical data. So we can train a model on a known correct target value. You'll hear people talk about regression and classification. In regression, we're predicting a continuous number, a value. So indeed, our house price prediction is an example of that. On the other hand, sometimes we want to predict a class or a category. For example, we want to predict whether a customer will churn, yes or no. This is an example of classification. So in the case of classification, we are also creating a function, but in this case, the function will find the borderline between the classes and the line that best separates the different classes from each other. Now you'll gain some experience on classification in the lab on in database machine learning. Unsupervised learning is different because there we don't have a label. We don't have desired expected output data. So we cannot follow a training approach as we did with supervised learning. Instead, what we do is just give the algorithm a set of input data and we basically ask it to find the hidden patterns in this data. The most common example of this is clustering. For example, take a list of customers and separate them into two groups. In this case, it's up to the algorithm to find which customers are most alike, uh, looking at all of their attributes. You can also use this technique to find anomalies in data. And for example, for that fraud detection uh, that I mentioned earlier. Reinforcement learning is entirely different. Here, think for example about how you would teach a dog a trick. With a dog, you would basically wait until it does something that's similar to what you want, and then you give it a reward. And the idea is that over time, the dog will adapt its neural network or its function to reach the goal that you want. We can use this same mechanism to teach a robot, for example, to pick up something on a factory line. Initially, this robot will have a model that lets it move rather randomly. But if it happens to get a bit closer to the goal that we've set, it will get a kind of reward by the system. And when that happens, the machine learning model of the robot will change its weights. And in the end, we will have a robot that reaches its goal without us having to tell it how to do that. 